So Blizzard just revealed their brand new World of Warcraft themed mobile game. And the first thing that we saw in the reveal trailer was a player inserting money. I happen to find that hilarious. Is that foreshadowing? Who knows? But today we're going to talk about my first impressions on Warcraft Arclight Rumble because this is a mobile gaming channel after all. And I think that this game is going to be a big deal. We're going to break down my first impressions into four categories. Okay. We're going to take a look at the sort of graphics and the art style of the game. I think that's very important. Then we're going to talk about the gameplay, what, what that game actually is. Then we're going to touch on the target audience and the sort of immediate reception that uh, they seem to be getting for this game. And then finally, the very end, we're going to talk about the monetization model for Warcraft Arc Light Rumble. And that should be really interesting because it seems like this game is going to be banned in a couple of countries right out of the gate, even though the pre-registration literally just opened. So one of the things that Blizzard has always done really well is cinematics. Like some would argue that the cinematics carried World of Warcraft through some of the horrible expansions in the most recent years. And this is no exception. Okay. The reveal trailer looks good. Okay. It's sort of quirky. It's creative and yeah maybe it's not targeted towards the hardcore world of warcraft players but in general i think it was actually really effective at getting people to understand sort of what the game is and what it's trying to be the graphics are extremely cartoony they're very toy like a lot of the minis which we're going to talk about later those are the characters that you can collect in the game look like amiibos or skylanders they're just little figurines it looks like they're made of plastic and it's very similar to the sort of clash of clans clash royale style but with a world of warcraft paint job and that's not really a bad thing i think the thing about mobile games is that they have to be able to run on a ton of different mobile devices and operating systems and the more accessible it is you know the, the better for the game and so a cartoony art style just like sort of in a world of warcraft works really well because you can make a low res version of it and make it work on lots of different devices so overall i think the graphics and art style are an a plus i actually think it looks really good and it's a new perspective on some of our favorite characters from the world of warcraft franchise which is always nice and having the world of warcraft theme and lore is going to work really well for the game i think the depth of the story for world of warcraft is it's almost unlimited right people have loved the world of warcraft characters and story for decades now and so i think that building a game on that is good especially a game that isn't world of warcraft i think that's something that is cool about hearthstone is that it uses a lot of the world of warcraft characters but it adds a new perspective to them so world of warcraft fans able to see their favorite characters in a different light in a different setting in a different game that's maybe a little bit more lighthearted. i think is really good and because of this i think the marketing for warcraft arc light rumble is going to be really really good okay that's one of the things that's super important for mobile games is really good marketing and you know you can argue that a lot of the mobile games coming out of like China there, they have really predatory marketing practices and the, the ads are cringy. Okay. The ads are horrible. We've shown some of them for rise of kingdoms here on this channel, but a lot of the mobile game ads are terrible. Okay. But if you look at some of the ads for like clash of clans, clash royale, for example, I think that is the tier and the quality and caliber that blizzard is going for. And you know, again, the cinematics and uh, the trailers have always been really good out of blizzard. And I think combining that with a mobile gaming marketing strategy is going to work really well. Like you're going to, there's going to be pre-rolls here on YouTube. They're going to show you some really cool gameplay for this brand new game. And overall, I think that is a strength for this game, even though the initial reception from the world of Warcraft community is lukewarm and apathetic at best. And we're going to talk about that later, but overall, I still think that's going to be a big strength. Now let's talk about the gameplay for arc light rumble, because this is, you know, a lot of people immediately noticed it was sort of a copy and paste of clash royale now i i know it, it's a little bit different okay but it's sort of one of those things where it's just like yeah you, you can copy my homework just change it up a little bit so the teacher doesn't know you know that sort of thing i mean in the reveal trailer they even talked about how they were inspired by tower defense games like they obviously were inspired by clash royale and also probably by the amount of money that supercell is making off of that game but regardless they took that put their own little spin on it and called it a tower offense game so okay that's cute but in general you're still defending an objective and of course it looks like you're trying to push across the map but it's pretty much a tug of war type of game so it's basically uh, a little bit of a variation on clash royale 
it's also a, a collectible game they made an emphasis on that if we take a look at some of the information that's already available on the Google Play Store we can see an emphasis on the build a team of legendary heroes and even down here it says collect over 60 Warcraft minis and characters dozens of units and characters from across Azeroth here it says play with iconic heroes like Jaina Proudmoore Gromash Hellstream and many more so there's an emphasis on collecting as well and this is sort of like a progression metric that's pretty common in most mobile games not just like Clash Royale for example but they don't just give you the character right you have to advance it over time by collecting shards of the character or pieces or using keys or whatever the case might be so they're really borrowing from Clash Royale and the mobile gaming scene which makes sense because it's very successful for a lot of these mobile games so hey if it if it ain't broke don't fix it one of the advantages that I think this game is going to have over Clash Royale is that it looks like there's a bunch of different maps that you can play on so that's something that I think got a little bit stale for me as someone who played Clash Royale for like two years or something like that three years um it, it does get a little bit boring having the exact same map over and over and over again and like yeah there's different themes but it's it's the same map okay let's not let's not get it twisted it's the same exact map in this game it looks like the maps are sort of designed with different twists and turns and some are very st two straight lines with a wall down the middle and some of them you know it, it varies a little bit which is good I think that's going to be a strength that the game has in keeping longevity because then they you know now that they've set the precedent that there's different maps they can add more maps in the future one of the other things I want to mention is that when you're collecting these minis it looks like they do have a sort of a talent system or at least you can pick a talent for the mini that you're using so you know just because you see a particular unit on the enemy team doesn't mean it's going to function or play exactly the same as maybe your version of that mini so that's something that maybe will also give the game a little bit more flexibility a little bit more customizability and a little bit more replayability and again I know like Clash Royale has been around for a long time so like replayability isn't that big of an issue but I think this is going to be a way to sort of set it apart a little bit uh because again the, the games are they look so similar um but they also did mention a lot of PVE content which is going to be really interesting they did mention um raids and dungeons that you can do either solo or co-op they also mentioned a guild system so this is you know similar again to clash royale you're probably going to be able to join a guild and invite all of your friends and you can take on bosses they mentioned uh daily and weekly events so these are probably just like daily quests and weekly quests that we see uh in pretty much all games these days but mainly in mobile games they have the dailies right you have to do your dailies otherwise you fall behind or you get a lot of value out of them for example so they didn't really elaborate too much on uh, dungeons or raids but I imagine that they're going to be maybe a weekly uh event or perhaps there'll be special events that come around like maybe the raids will rotate every month or something like that to a different type of raid and you know you maybe you have to play with other players or I guess you can do it solo according to them but taking down a big boss with different mechanics and things like that that could be interesting okay um it could be interesting in a mobile format so I'm excited to see more about that because they didn't really tell us too much and also from a gameplay perspective I think that this can have tie-ins with World of Warcraft with Hearthstone maybe even with Overwatch and Diablo and other games like that there will probably be some sort of an incentive to at least play this game if you already enjoy other Blizzard games so for example when Hearthstone came out there was a you had to get like get through the tutorial and do something special to get the Hearthsteed mount in World of Warcraft right so that tie-in is nice and I imagine that there will be a way to link your Blizzard account to this mobile game and you know keep your progress but also you know it, there could be some interactability between the different games and I think that's you know that's going to be a good way to get the diehard Blizzard fans to at least try a mobile game that maybe they wouldn't normally play and hopefully the game is good enough to get them to continue playing speaking of the Blizzard audience let's talk about the target audience uh for this game and sort of the initial reception that we're seeing um clearly they are targeting the average mobile gamer okay they're not targeting the people that are doing mythic rating in World of Warcraft they're not targeting the people that are you know professional esports players in Overwatch right that's not the type of gamer that they're focusing on they're focusing on the player who is 30 years old and they have some time while they're riding the bus to work and they can play a quick two minute game of Warcraft Rumble and maybe the game will be strategic enough to get people you know slightly invested and enjoying the game for those little downtime moments that they have throughout the day maybe during their lunch break or something like that the same type of audience that you see 
playing games like clash royale um speaking of clash royale i think you know obviously that's the audience that they're going for but i do think that they're going to have a very uphill battle stealing players from clash royale now i know that you know people if you do play clash royale and you've been playing for years you're probably a bit jaded of the game you're probably a bit bored of the game at this point there's new units that keep coming into the game and maybe some of them have power creep over others and maybe it's harder to max certain cards certain legendary cards and you're frustrated it feels pay to win so maybe those people who are a little bit uh less excited about clash royale are going to give warcraft um uh, arcanite rumble a try but in general i think it's going to be again a very uphill battle for them to steal a majority share of that uh, player base because there are other games that are copying clash royale as well and not succeeding because the game's actually good right the thing about clash royale is that it's a well thought out game it is a supercell game and it, it it's just it performed really well because of uh you know how good the game was initially built and the support that it's received over the years and that's one of the things that supercell is really good with is continuing to support their games and bring new things to them and refresh them and i know that if you're a clash royale player maybe you're, you don't feel that way necessarily but just looking at the longevity of clash royale you can argue that it has had staying power so getting people away from a game that they've already invested years of their time potentially into and possibly lots of money right we're talking about a free to play mobile game here and we'll talk about the monetization model in a second but if somebody has spent hundreds maybe even thousands of dollars on clash royale blizzard dropping a competitor to that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to just hop right over and play so it's going to be really hard for them to break into this tower defense market i think and again it's good that they're bringing familiar characters and a good cinematic team to the marketing for the game because they're going to need it uh, but is that going to be enough I don't think so the game is going to have to be really really good and it's going to have to offer a lot for the free-to-play players to be an incentive for people to even start to try the game taking a look at the world of warcraft forums it seems like the world of warcraft player base is apathetic at best to this game mainly saying like oh yes this is a blizzard mobile game this is exactly what we thought it would be uh and at worst people saying that like you know this is just it's just garbage people are just saying like okay this why are you doing this to our favorite characters type of thing like this is not what the world of warcraft player wants and again that's because they're not designing this game for world of warcraft players right so the initial reception seems lukewarm it's kind of uh it seems like a very safe bet right it doesn't seem like this game is taking very many risks they're using a formula that is proven and successful they're using an art style that's proven and successful they're using characters that are proven and successful so really it begs the question of why would I download this game when you know Clash Royale already exists and if I want to see these favorite characters I can play games like World of Warcraft or Hearthstone right so Blizzard is really going to have to prove themselves um to get these apathetic uh players to enjoy the game and I think again they're probably going to have some sort of mount tie-in or cosmetic tie-in or something like that that's going to get people to at least try the game and hopefully they'll see that they like it and if they're successful this game could actually be something that gets new players into world of warcraft obviously everybody knows that if you've played world of warcraft in the last couple of years the game has been in a steady decline there's been lawsuits against uh the blizzard team the dev team there's been so much going on at blizzard there was the you know the whole uh, hearthstone hong kong incident right free hong kong that type of thing so uh, a new game that could basically tap into an audience that maybe doesn't play blizzard games already will be good if it's successful because then people can say oh like who this Jaina Proud Proudmoore character like it seems like there's a lot of lore behind her let me do a little bit of uh research and boom now maybe they download World, World of Warcraft or maybe they haven't played World of Warcraft but they're familiar with Warcraft 3 from when they were a kid and they're like oh man like whatever happened with the Lich King right like and then they download World of Warcraft so again if it's successful it could be good for World of Warcraft which I think is just good for everybody even if the World of Warcraft players don't like this type of game okay finally let's talk about the monetization model because that is very important here uh, for Western audiences especially and that is uh, you know it's a mobile game so the game is going to be a free to play game which means that it will probably have the same free to play style of monetization strategy and we can see down here at the bottom under interactive elements it does say that there are in-game purchases that include random items what that means is loot boxes okay there's going to be some form of randomized chest that gives you shards to a specific mini or unit or troop or whatever you want to call them and you can see evidence of that here okay these minis have different levels okay this is level 11 level 13 level 11 level 12 and this looks again like a copy and paste 
from clash royale now it does look like you also have some sort of main champion here that is going to play a more crucial role than the individual units but again a randomized loot box system is what we can expect from warcraft arc light rumble and that's not a great thing right obviously the extent to which this game is going to be pay to win is going to determine how much of these uh, free boxes you get just by playing the game doing the dailies doing the dungeons doing the raids being in guilds right can you get a lot of these things and be competitive as a free-to-play player and i don't think that's going to be the case obviously the game is not out yet so we don't know but if you look at games like clash of clans clash royale rise of kingdoms any sort of very successful mobile game um it always has a free-to-play model and when the game first comes out usually the developers are very generous with what they give their community to build that community up and then over time they sort of remove some of those different elements or they slow the progression for the free-to-play players to incentivize people to actually spend money and that's generally how these games go I, I mean it's just it is what it is okay they're a business they have to make money and in the loot box system you know giving too many free loot boxes means there's no reason for people to spend again it, it, it has to be uh, seen in game to know exactly um how predatory this system is going to be but clearly it's going to be a, a system that is exponential you're going to need probably more fragments or pieces of a mini to get it to the next subsequent level so getting from level one to two is probably almost instantaneous three to or two to three is probably pretty quick three to four is probably pretty quick but once you hit level 10 11 it's probably going to require potentially hundreds of these shards to get that specific mini to the next level and that's the point where you know when the game launches with over 60 minis you know that sounds really good as a marketing tactic like oh my god look at all the characters we have but what that means is that when you open a loot box the chance that you get the piece that you want is one in 60 right now of course they're probably gonna have different rarities so it's gonna be probably common maybe rare and then epic or legendary or something like that right that's usually how these mobile games go so some of these are probably easier to get than others and you know that probably will have to depend on the power range right but just like pulling a holographic card in a box of pokemon cards you know usually the holographic ones tend to be the most powerful and the way that you get more of them is by opening more packs and if there's a limit to the number of packs that you get for free that means you're gonna have to whip out the credit card so the fact that we already know and can confirm that this game will have a free-to-play loot box monetization model is going to immediately turn off many players but does that mean this game is dead in the water absolutely not because one of the things that people forget right a lot of times here in the west in the united states right um gamers like to say that uh this free-to-play model is garbage right and then what we happen to see is that mobile gaming is continuing to dominate the gaming scene it's making more money than AAA gaming it's getting more playtime than AAA gaming so at the end of the day like hey the the it is what it is okay people are spending money in these mobile games and so the fact that it has loot boxes does not mean that the game is going to in immediately get a uh, backlash and get canceled right away even though many people are not going to like the fact that that is the monetization model for the game and it likely will be pay to win as for me i'm definitely going to be trying the game out uh, i do play super casually world of warcraft i just sort of dabble in it because i do enjoy the lore and the fantasy of the world and i did play clash royale for a couple of years and i haven't played it since maybe 2019 or 2020 or something like that so i am a fan of these types of games and so this game is sort of appealing to me although again it doesn't really take that many risks so i don't understand why i would play this instead of just going back to my clash royale account that already has a couple hundred dollars invested into it but anyway i am pre-registered for the closed beta so hey blizzard if you see this okay i want to play your game and I, i'll make videos about it here on the channel okay so give me a chance give me a shot and uh, i promise to give you as much constructive feedback as i can because as you guys know who are long-term watchers of this channel i'm constantly giving constructive feedback to lilith about rise of kingdoms whether they like it or not anyway my opinions are worth nothing without yours in the comment section below so let me know down there are you excited for the game did you even know the game was revealed and announced are you apathetic are you gonna try it are you not gonna try it i would love to hear from you down there and while you're down there drop a thumbs up on the video it really does help out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other warcraft players might see it if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace